Well, in the days following the Iowa caucus, it's becoming increasingly more obvious that this primary is over, folks. It is not close. We're taking a look at the new New Hampshire numbers coming in. The one chance Nikki Haley has to try and turn the primaries, maybe get some momentum, and it is not even a battle. Donald Trump now, 91% chance to win the New Hampshire primary. Nikki Haley down 22% at around 9%. That's according to real-time updated betting odds that just came out this morning. Donald Trump up to a 91% chance, and you're seeing all these polls. Even with the independents voting in New Hampshire and people like Mark Cuban tweeting out, maybe Democrats can can go and vote as independents because they're so scared of Trump and try and get Nikki Haley uh, the nomination. It's just not going to happen. Donald Trump, I mean, this we're at the point where do any of these candidates even make it to Super Tuesday? I mean, DeSantis at this point, even after his good performance, which it really wasn't good. If you actually go back and think about the idea of DeSantis losing Iowa by 30 points seven or eight months ago, you would say, wow, his campaign is over. Now it's like this victory because people were surprised he barely beat out Nikki Haley. Either way, it's all anecdotal. It doesn't matter. Both Haley and DeSantis, and now DeSantis is getting like five or 6% in New Hampshire. I could see DeSantis dropping out. And at this point, there's really only one thing for DeSantis to do. I know Vivek kind of speculated, well, because DeSantis is controlled by his donors, he's going to drop out and endorse Nikki Haley and be her VP. That's not what's happening here. What's happening here is DeSantis will be dropping out. I don't know if it's going to be after New Hampshire, after Nevada, probably sometime before Super Tuesday, and he will be immediately, or at least within the next few days after he drops out, endorsing Donald Trump. And Nikki Haley, maybe she makes it to Super Tuesday uh, to where it's a 1v1 matchup, Trump versus Nikki Haley. According to the polls, it's just not even close. I mean, the polls were exactly right in Iowa with Trump getting the record percent, over 50%, getting the mass majority of the delegates. And and this is kind of depressing, honestly. I mean, it's not that I have anything against Trump. I do like Trump over Haley, Uh, obviously, but the issue is I really wanted to see a competitive primary season. I don't think anything's going to beat the 2016 primaries with both parties. I mean, the Democrats, it was kind of ridiculous. They kind of phoned it in for Hillary, but Bernie Sanders fought a little bit, and that was kind of fun to see. And then with Republicans, there were just like so many people in the race. Could Trump win it? I don't know, man. Are we ever going to get a primary season like that again? It's just like, this is over, man. This isn't even close. You can't even do videos on this anymore because it's just, you're just analyzing. The polls are just so out of control. Like, take a look at this. Here's California. You can see all of these numbers coming in. What I'm looking at, you can see the president, Biden, plus 20. Yeah, this is where Democrats run up their popular vote numbers in California with the mass population centers in LA, in San Francisco. That's why the Democrats are always favorites to win the popular vote. They get huge percentages from those areas. But it is interesting to see the president with just Biden versus Trump. And then Biden gets downgraded five points when you include RFK, West, and Stein. So that poll might be suggesting, even though it doesn't matter, Biden's going to win California. We all know that. That poll would suggest that when you include Cornell West, RFK, and Jill Stein, it hurts Biden by about five points. I don't think that accurately describes what's going to be happening with the swing states because California is disproportionately liberal. The swing states are a lot more even, and and I think they're going to hurt Trump a little bit more in terms of RFK Jr. being in the race. But in general, you can see the GOP president whenever the California primary is. Donald Trump's already at 62%. Even Ramaswamy was at 7%. Now that Ramaswamy's dropped out and is literally campaigning for Trump, and we're starting to wonder, could Vivek be the choice uh, for the VP? I mean, Trump was standing behind Vivek, and he was just... uh, You can tell that Trump is very impressed, and Vivek is an extremely impressive speaker. He's very articulate, but when you're talking about Picking a VP, there's more than just, you know, the best speaker. You also have to think about, you know, balancing the ticket. And then you can see Texas. Uh, for the president, Trump is sitting plus eight. Yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty good news if you are a Republican. I, obviously, we don't think Texas is going to be in play for the Democrats. There was kind of a narrative back in 2016 that Hillary might have an outside chance of winning Texas, but nobody thought in 2020 Biden had any shot. And then there you can see, I mean, even with 
all of the others, the whole band with RFK Jr., West and Stein, Trump goes from plus 8 to plus 10. So that's another poll suggesting maybe RFK Jr., because we already know West is going to help Trump for sure, but maybe RFK Jr. might be helping Trump slightly. Again, like with a state like Texas, it just doesn't matter. It's all about what happens to the independent voters in the swing states. Would they hypothetically have gone for Trump and now they're going for RFK Jr. because they actually have an independent option? That's the issue you would have to think if you are Trump. And it's the same thing with Biden. With Biden, it's more of a problem of motivating voters. It's very hard to vote for Biden right now based on, you know, his health status, his situation. He can barely talk. That's the whole idea of Biden coming out and saying threat to democracy, fascism. You have to put fear in people's hearts to try and get them to come vote for you because right now there's just not a big motivation for independent people to come out and vote for Biden. Uh, But you can see Ted Cruz really struggling in the Senate, plus two and plus one against his competitors there. Yeah, no wonder Ted Cruz endorsed Trump. Seems like everyone's falling in line at this point endorsing Donald Trump. And then there you can see GOP, uh, Trump's at around 70% in the primary poll. It's just, these are just, they're so out of control. 69% to 11 to 7. DeSantis dropping out, I would assume, very shortly and endorsing Trump. And Nikki Haley possibly making it to Super Tuesday. I honestly, I hope she does make it to Super Tuesday because I just want to see an actual Super Tuesday where there are people in the race. I hope DeSantis makes it to Super Tuesday as well. But the issue is it's not even going to matter because Trump's going to win everything. It's not close. These are not competitive states at this point. Is the Republican primary over? Debates canceled as Haley Trump make final pitch to New Hampshire voters. CNN really screwed themselves when they didn't allow Vivek to go to that one debate. And it ended up it ended up being just Haley versus DeSantis, I'm guessing the debate did terrible in terms of ratings and CNN saying it's just not worth having another Nikki Haley versus DeSantis debate after the first one bombed because they didn't allow Ramaswamy up there and they're just canceling debates. The Republican primary, the gist of this video, it's done. It's just not possible. The, The margins are too high. I'm saddened by it because, you know, this 2016 primary, it was like my entry to politics. It was so fun to see. You had Ben Carson, Ted Cruz, Trump, the novelty of him being new. Could an outsider who's a businessman actually come in and win the nomination of a major political party in the United States? And, you know, in 2020, the Democrats rigged it for Biden when they forced everyone else to drop out to consolidate the vote with Biden. Uh, Obviously, the Republicans really didn't have a primary in 2020 with Trump being the incumbent. And now here we are in 2024 with the Democrats really not having a primary season and the Republicans just, uh, you know, Trump just crushing everyone. It's not going to be close. And Donald Trump, you know, the only thing this is the only thing I'll say Trump's legal situation facing all of those charges. Will it possibly keep Nikki Haley in the race? And will the establishment say, look, there's a chance Trump might actually not be able to run. Maybe he goes to prison. Maybe he gets charged. That's our only hope. So let's keep you in the race. Let's prop you up. Yes, you're going to get crushed in every state. But what if something happens to Trump? Could DeSantis also be looking at that as a way for him to stay in the race? So that's another thing that makes this kind of confusing or at least throws a little bit of a monkey wrench into it. I don't think that's going to matter at all personally. But it is something to watch out for. Maybe the establishment is hoping something happens to Trump. The Republican establishment, that is. They can pop prop up Nikki Haley or, or DeSantis. I would imagine it would be Nikki Haley. And the only reason DeSantis would stay in the race is if he can think, well, maybe if Trump, something happens to him and he's done, I can beat Nikki Haley because I just beat her in Iowa, even though it was only by two points. Again, I would expect, I mean, this is just a charade, you know, the only reason these people would stay in the race is the hope that something happens to Trump legally that forces him to honestly like go to prison, which uh, there's less than a 1% chance of that happening. Uh, But we've also got this. How about this? Oklahoma lawmaker targets furries in school bill to involve animal control. Now, I want to make sure this is actually a real headline. I don't know if you guys remember Joe Rogan had a podcast maybe about like a year and a half, two years ago when he fell for some type of fake headline. I think it was on Facebook 
and the headline was that they were bringing in litter boxes for furries, and oh my god, Reddit had a feel, I mean, Reddit was like, oh my god, Joe Rogan lied, he lied, it was a fake headline, so I want to make sure this, I don't even know if this is real, but it is funny to look at this, and, and, and you can see these, these Reddit, Redditors just getting so triggered that, oh, <laughs> that, that they're going to be involving animal control. <laughs> <laughs> this has got to be fake. Wait, here it is. Here it is right now. Students who purport to be an imaginary animal or animal species who engage in anthropomorphic behavior commonly referred to as furries at school stalls should not be allowed to participate in school curriculum or activities. The parent or guardian of a student in violation of this section shall pick up the student from the school or animal control services shall be contacted to remove the student. This has got to be fake. <laughs> Dude, imagine they bring in like a, one of those collars or whatever and, and just wrap it around the furry's head and drag him into the freaking back of the car or whatever, the animal control car. Oh my goodness. Uh, but I just thought that was funny. Either way, guys, the gist of this video... It, this is over. The only way Trump can lose is if something happens to him legally. The polls are just out of control. Even in New Hampshire, where Nikki Haley was getting excited, she lost her chance at winning New Hampshire when she finished in third behind DeSantis in Iowa. She really needed to slingshot herself with a solid second place finish, and people thought maybe she finishes in second by eight or nine points over DeSantis, and of course it didn't happen. She was actually two points behind him, so she's lost all of her momentum. Even with the independents voting in the primary, it's an open primary, you know, even Mark Cuban coming out and saying Democrats should vote for Nikki Haley, it doesn't matter because Trump is up by so much. And again, even if she had won New Hampshire, it wouldn't matter either. So it's like, it's just, it's a complete blowout at this point in the Republican primary. Either way, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on X. Link to that's always in the description.